Cats, it's Ed, Patrick Moore, Bud here. One last shoe review for 2021. This is the last one. An initial review of a shoe from Adidas, which is a little perplexing. The Adidas Addy Star. Thanks for joining me today, friends. It's always appreciated. Good to have you here. Have a glass of sherry and a mince pie on me. Help support the channel by grabbing some merchandise from the links below. But also, if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button and the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. And you can help us out too in terms of the YouTube algorithm by giving this video a thumbs up like and sharing it with your running buddies. Have a happy new year. On the bench today is a rather colossal looking shoe. Fortunately, it doesn't weigh quite as much as you would expect. Probably a potential long run shoe, this one, I think. It's gonna have quite a niche use case. I picked up the Addy Star from the Adidas website. Retail price here is 120. I got it for considerably less than that. I think it was about 79 or something. A little bit easier to stomach. In my UK size 11, this weighs 364 grams, which is 12.9 ounces. So we're talking similar weight to the Solar Boost 3. That Boston 10 comes in a tiny bit lighter at 345 grams, as does the Puma Magnify Nitro as well, which is just a little bit more than the Boston. And we got the glide ride almost feather like at 336 grams so there's certainly a bit more heft to the addy star now you might be looking at the heel stack here and wondering just how high it is apparently the sample sizes were 37.5 millimeters i make mine about 40 millimeters in that uk size 11. there's a six mil drop here so do the math the blue russian indigo colorway is certainly striking but how about the shoe on foot let's get to it upper first so upper wise very similar mesh material here to what you get on the solar boost 3 especially in the toe box i'd suggest it's a little bit wider than something like the adios 6 but it is certainly quite snug over the top of the foot in the toe box area similar i suppose in terms of fit to the ultra boost 22 lockdown is very different to some of the other adidas shoes that i've tested out over 2021 much more padding here this certainly feels like a more plush shoe think along the lines of the Saucony triumph series that heel collar Oh, it's like a cozy blanket in the winter time. The tongue could be home to several field mice. You don't need to cinch the laces too much really to get a good lockdown here. There's so much padding on top of the foot. You're not going to have to worry about that. It's a Nike lace loop style system here. They've kind of ripped off loads of brands here really in the Addy Star. You've got some Hoka kind of looks. The upper profile of some of Nike's shoes. It's a bit of a greatest hits really. That support system really works though. It grips around the foot. Those third to fourth eyelets, it works. You certainly know the upper of the shoe is there, but I wouldn't say in an unpleasant sort of way. Certainly don't expect loads of toe box room here. It's quite an odd fit, really. It's going to work for some people and not others. I've got a relatively low volume foot. I think if you've got a wider foot or a certainly very high volume foot, you could run into some issues. When you look at all the padding and stuff that's incorporated into the Addy Star upper, you think that the shoe is going to probably be up there in the 400 grams range. 364 grams, it's just about doable for me to make it not feel ludicrously heavy on foot. I would suggest the lace length is a tad short if you do like using a runner's knot, you're going to be out of luck here. If you're going up to the second to last eyelet, it's going to be pushing it. I think darn comfortable though for the intended long run purpose. All of Adidas's promotional material surrounding this shoe is about long run. So I think we've got to review it with that in mind. I found that upper very accommodating for my foot. A lot of padding there. I'd suggest in wet weather it's going to get pretty heavy and the short laces could really irritate some people. I'll give it a reasonable 2.5 out of 3 after my initial runs for the upper. Midsole now. Boy, oh boy, a eh? dual density midsole here for sure. But that firm concrete-like section here of the Repetitor Plus really is a wrap. The actual Repetitor foam runs all the way through. So underneath your foot, it's this type of stuff rather than this. I think it's very much there to create some stability. This foam here is really quite soft. Don't be fooled by the apparent firm nature of the heel section. I think it's really there to encase the midsole and provide a bit of extra durability and longevity. A lovely squashy ride if you're a midfoot striker. Maybe reminiscent of the Saucony Triumph series or perhaps the foam you find in the Rincon or Clifton series from Hoka. But it's an Adidas version of the good Nike React. 
not the stuff that you get in the Zoom Fly 4, the stuff you find in the Infinity Run or perhaps the Pegasus Trail 3. I've got to say, I really like this repetitive stuff. Not a shoe for high speed by any stretch, guys. Don't buy this one thinking you're going to be able to run some ridiculously fast intervals. It's not going to happen. Gut wrenching sessions are just out of the question in the Addy Star. I think it could certainly fit the bill for long runs, perhaps if you're training for a half or full marathon. And it's a pleasant surprise. Seems to get better as well once you've got a few more miles into it. I think we're up to about 14 miles in my initial runs and they've all been very, very cushioned and comfortable. There is a really pronounced rocker sensation here. It just says Keith Richards to me. You've got that sort of forwards motion falling off the cliff style vibe and I enjoyed the extra little push that I got from the Eddie stuff. I think mid to forefoot, it's a winner, but the heel is going to upset people. I know it is. There must be a good reason that Adidas have utilised this firmer foam in the heel. I'd suggest that after the extensive testing they've done with the Addy Star. Maybe the repetitor foam did start to bottom out after a certain time and that harder heel area may assist with stability certainly when you get into the higher echelons of those long runs. It's a little bit like the stabilizing element you find in the Reebok Symmetros heel section. I think it could provide everyday standard runners with a bit of a helping hand, perhaps when their form starts to break down further and further into a long run. I think that's something that happens to a lot of people over distance efforts, whether they want to admit it or not. I think it will soften up a little bit like a ripe avocado over time. Do I like the ride and the fit of this shoe over the Boston 10? Yes, I do. I'll give it a 2.6 for the midsole after my initial runs. Outsole now. See, we have lashings of continental rubber here. That's going to be music to the ears of those who believe. Great grip here in the Addy Star, and something of a halfway house between the Boston 10 and the Solar Boost 3 outsoles. In wet and very sludgy terrain on the New Year's Eve run today, traction was assured. Equally as good on road and tarmac. On gravel, the slats and fins here gave some reasonable traction, though I noticed a big build-up in terms of grit and grime in the outsole of the Addy Star. It was particularly bad in this rear section of the shoe. I got loads of stones actually lodged into some of these smaller parts. In fact, one of them kind of penetrated through this outer layer of the midsole. I don't know how thick this stuff is, but I think if you stood on a very sharp stone, it would just go straight into it. And in like depth, well, it's going to take an age to wear this one down. We know continental rubber is extremely durable. I think a good balance between lug depth, the amount of coverage of rubber we've got here on the outsole, and versatile enough for distance efforts. It's normally pretty hard to fault Adidas outsoles. I'm going to give this a 2.7 out of 3 after my initial runs for the outsole. Just let down a little bit by extreme debris accumulation, mainly in the carved out exposed midsole areas of the outsole value now so at 120 earth credits here in the uk at retail at least that makes the adi star a relatively cheap long run companion it's the line between a max cushion shoe and a very plush comfortable upper there's certainly a more rocker profile to the shoe than something like the reebok Symmetros or the Triumph from Socony. I'd say it's a little closer perhaps to the Glide Ride than anything, though a vastly more stable ride than something like the Invincible Run. I'd say this isn't a shoe everybody's going to need. If you're just running 5 or 10Ks, you're not doing those longer runs, it's just not going to get enough use. If you are doing those type of runs and you're looking for a shoe that's got a nice plush interior, you want a little bit of a stability element there, the Addy Star could be ideal. A really nice upper here, very padded. It does the trick, it does work. If you haven't got too much of a high volume foot, bags of cushion, but it's a big heel stack here, it has to be said. Even in the sample size, 37.5 millimeters in the heel is no joke. Five to 10K racers need not apply with the Addy Star. Quite a minimal niche use case on this one, so it's not a must have. I'll give it a reasonable 2.5 out of three for value after my initial runs. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us 10.2 out of 12 for the Adidas Addy Star after my initial runs. Again, with this Adidas effort, quite a lot of that foam here, that firmer stuff, is actually cupping around the heel. So don't be too scared by the apparent heel stack. A nice cushioned long run cruiser. This one could help me out in the new year as I start to rebuild my longer runs. Have you picked up the Adi Star? Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. When it comes to the end of the year, I'm always in sort of 
sentimental mood. One track that always strikes a chord with me is from Chaz and Dave and their wonderful song Ain't No Pleasing You. This track is special to me for all sorts of different reasons. As a good friend of mine, it's one of his favourite tunes and I can really dig the sentiment of it as well, where the lyrics sort of discuss how somebody doesn't really appreciate someone, I suppose, and there's no way you can ever please them, there's nothing you can do about it, and they're sort of telling them, right, I'm off, I've had enough of this, you're not appreciating me, goodbye. I just love the production on it, the wonderful Tom intro, the fantastic soaring strings, and the pumping piano. Vocals are brilliant on this one as well, the lyrics really poignant, one of Chaz and Dave's finest efforts. Of course, you can listen to this one with your big proper pint glass, your Gurcha glass, sup on some ale, and think about the good times. Thanks to all of you that have been tuning in over the course of 2021, it's really appreciated. Can't believe we're almost at 25,000 subscribers. There will be a giveaway coming up in the new year, so do keep your eyes peeled for that one. It's time for me to have a nice drink and play a little bit of guitar, I think, before the new year appears. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we roll those new videos out for you. And you can really help the channel out too by giving this video a thumbs up like, but also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud. Happy New Year. <laughs>